rock stars, and thank you for joining us in an OMR Masterclass session for 2020, where we will be looking at different opportunities on how to win the media game during the COVID-19 summer. My name is Eric Vissers. I'm Senior Marketing Manager at DCMN, and beside me, I have... Philip Villarsen, the new CEO of DCMN. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so Eric, I mean, like before we start, I think there's one important question to ask. Yeah. How are you actually doing? I'm actually doing quite well, to be honest. Um, living in lockdown, yes, it was a, a drastic change, but now that I'm working from home, I have more access to my family. And this is something I appreciate. It's a blessing in disguise, to be honest. And to be honest, how are you coping with the whole situation? It was interesting because, I mean, I started on the 1st of April and it was not an April Fool's joke. It was actually me starting in front of a screen instead of being able to come to the office and meet everyone. Um, so it was an intense time, but it was so much better than I expected. Also because DCMN was quite well equipped. So everyone was just at home, um, Zoom work, there were meetings set up. So that was quite easy and nice. But nevertheless, obviously, such a drastic change of what I was expecting when I signed the contract, actually. Um, but there's one thing that I feel like I'm currently missing a bit because I'm still at the beginning, right? And that is, how did the clients actually cope with everything? Because you're in contact with them. So what was their main concern? Yeah, that was intense because with the clients, I didn't have the opportunity to talk about marketing strategies, about how to build their brand. It was more down to earth and trying to understand how they're coping personally with yeah. this COVID period. Yeah, I'm asking them how they're doing, how are they coping? Have they done specific uh, personal measurements on, on, on our surviving, so to say? Have they washed their hands lately? That's the other question I had to ask them, of course. Yeah. But all in all, it was a, a real change. It was too extreme for them. Yeah, I can imagine. And I think that's also the reason why we are actually here today to talk about how we can now cope with the whole situation. So let me just quickly show you through the agenda. So at the beginning, we would like to do a deep dive into the status quo. So where are we also on a psychological level? Because we think it's quite important to understand that. Then we want to talk about the summer that is coming up and if having a break or staying dark is actually the right movement for, for this situation now. And we talked to our insights team and gathered some really nice um, consumer behavior facts um, that will help us to predict how they are coping and what they will maybe change actually in the next month. And for us, super important, and I think for you guys as well, will be are there any opportunities that we can actually take and, and turn into something that makes us feel like we are the winners of this super extreme time. So in the end, we will hopefully give you five necessary key takeaways to win the game in the summer. So Eric, let's do the deep dive. What is the status quo? Where are we? Whoa. When COVID hit, things got weird. Yeah, It's been a weird time that we've been living through. You've seen it in the social media. You've seen it in the news. People reporting about stockpiling toilet paper, stockpiling wine, stockpiling noodles, and stockpiling condoms. Condoms. You know? That's crazy. We were, we were faced with so many issues that we couldn't even cope with it anymore. People were actually worried about where they were the money was coming from. They were undergoing short-term work. Businesses were closing down or even limiting their marketing spend. They didn't know where they were gonna make sales. And on the brand perspective, they didn't even know how to cope with, how to communicate with their consumers. How should they adapt? And how can they make themselves relevant again uh, moving forward? We just were so worried of being worried. We didn't know how to respond anymore. But there is actually a logical explanation behind this. Looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Who was that exactly? Maslow was actually a psychologist from the States who invested his work and dedicated his work in understanding what is required of a human to survive in this period, okay. in any period of life, so to say. And if we look at the different stages, which are five, there are, of course, numerous versions, but I'm going to keep it simple. Um, we are now. Before COVID, there was this period where we were only focusing on our spiritual needs, mm -hmm. yeah, of being belonging to something, a society, being respected with self-esteem, prestige. And then you have the, the top of it, self-actualization. That's when people start investing more time in themselves and how, to do, how they can grow further. Now COVID kicks in and just 
smacks everyone in the face. We're back into normal and back into the absolute basics where we have to make sure, oh, are we gonna be warm? Oh, are we gonna be comfortable? Oh, are we gonna be safe? Yeah, these are the things that were now going through their minds and they were limited to this stress of constantly being confronted in media and this actually affected them so hardcore that they were in such a survival mode which then led to two decisions. Am I gonna go in flight mode or am I gonna fight this? Mm -hmm. Right? And what does that mean for marketers? Oh man, for marketers, crazy. So when they were faced with this option, most of them of course didn't know what to do. They had, they, there was no predictability anymore in what, act, whatever activity they were doing. So they have to regain control. Okay. And by regaining control, they cut down spends and only focus on the things they could optimize directly, which is kind of a tough cookie. And we totally respect it, but there's another, there's another way of doing things around. So I think now it's important to really say, what are we going to do now? Is the summer break actually something we should do? Because I know from experience from my former employers that because we were a digital product, actually we were not used that much in summer, so our seasonality was dropping, which also mostly meant that we cut marketing spends. So that, in my opinion, could be a normal behavior for a lot of our brands and clients, and, and you are unaware of what, what you should do now that the summer is already like that. But I think what should, we should keep in mind is if we already were dark, is that actually the right way to move forward? And that's why I'm not sure. What do you think? I doubt it. I doubt it's a good decision because we're now not living in a routine anymore. Nothing is predictable. What happened in 2019 doesn't necessarily have to mean it happens now. There was no crisis. And brands who go silent totally will not be relevant anymore with the next purchase decision that, that consumers will undertake. And so we've seen in 2008, during the last recession, those brands who kept their marketing spend, I wouldn't say high, but they were active nonetheless. They regained their brand awareness and brand level, so to say, nine times quicker than those who have gone silent completely. So think about the long term when you're actually thinking about cutting spends. What do you think the consumer actually expects? During the beginning of, of COVID, consumers actually expected that brands would continue. Only 8% of them actually thought uh, there's not going to be much happening or there's going to be a little bit less spends. Interesting. Because this whole spending area and keeping top of mind is actually the decision maker. It helps people make that decision. Am I going to invest my money in a more trustworthy brand that I trust and can control? Or am I going to look into something new because that brand is not available anymore? And it raised to 71% during the COVID period. Oh, true. So, shall we be the light in the dark now? We should actually, because to be honest, there are so many opportunities now that publishers are offering us um, in terms of new media um, campaigns, but also that costs of media itself have been reduced so drastically that it is a moment in time to test something new. And by going silent completely, we know the saying, out of sight, out of mind. And that's where we lose. That's where we lose. All right. So to sum that up, we know that the summer is going to be difficult because we are still in the middle of the pandemic. We should not forget that, even though restrictions are loosening. But we should also be aware that the summer is different, right? OK. So because we figured out that this is the case, uh, we took the insights that we gathered together with our insights team and predicted what the consumer behavior will be in the upcoming months because we actually believe it's very important to understand where our target group, the consumers, actually are going to be at, also psychologically and actually also where they will be because I think there will also be a big difference. Definitely, and we see this in, in our last kind of research that because of this whole lockdown situation that we're only allowed to stay at home, there is a sudden urge to move out again. Yeah. Nevertheless, within a safe boundary, a safe boundary which we as humans can control. And that's why there's gonna be an uplift in staycations. Yeah. People are gonna take holidays within their safe boundaries uh, that the, the, the country is offering them. And then, of course, on top of their list, people wanna visit family and friends more. Yeah, that was also true for me, to be honest. Yeah, 
My list on top is actually getting a haircut. I do know why. And I think you already said that before, we should also be aware that people will spend more time outside. I mean, like in general, if there's a nice summer, like last year, for example, it's obvious that people want to spend time outside. But now that if they are not even going on vacation, what they are normally used to, um, a lot of people will actually really do the experience around their areas and cities, look at tourist attractions and so on. So we are going to spend more time outside. I'm actually also already looking so much forward to it. I can imagine people are appreciating how the outside world more than they're actually in the inside because they've been living it so long. And another point is that they're still going to be consuming news. Yes. We can't ignore the fact that COVID is still lurking around the corners. So they're going to be looking at news. They're going to be consuming news on a daily basis. And this has been increasing since COVID actually got introduced into our lives. So globally speaking, news is being consumed on a daily basis. And on that, governments have also been very involved in pushing the economy back to where it used to be by telling people and consumers, please invest and, and purchase local goods, help your economy, do something like socially uh, responsible in building your own country back up. And this is an, also an interesting aspect in Maslow's third level of, of uh, hierarchy that you want to give to your society and belong. Okay. So speaking of giving, but now taking, this is the important part, which I find is so interesting. We've been undergoing lockdown for so long that people were of course scared of spending on extra goods. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you wanted to make sure that you have everything intact, there's two bottom levels. Now, after lockdown, things clearing up a bit, we feel there's a sense of revenge shopping. Ooh for all that time that's lost. Hilary, do you have any re revenge shopping happening on your side? Guilty, I actually do. Like I just bought a sunbed for my garden, which I, I really am happy about, but it felt differently this time to buy it because obviously when starting a new job in a crisis, you are more aware that you should hold on to your money than normally. So I did not really spend anything on much on anything. So buying that sunbed for my garden, something that I'm really looking forward to, was it felt a bit like a freedom fight thing. So I totally get that revenge shopping. Definitely. And what's interesting in this case is that you mentioned that you purchased something that's new and it complements your health and well-being. Yeah. So you invested in two things. You're winning on both sides. And what's interesting to see that is during the lockdown, people were of course limited into their activities. Yeah. And so they invested more, interestingly, in roller skates and inline skates because That's they right. wanted to be active, but within their vicinity, yeah. which is safe. Cool. And of course, if you spend more time being in lockdown, you also have time for yourself. You can actually discover yourself more. And people have been prone to actually then look into doing new things. Have you done new things during lockdown? Yeah, I tried to um, learn how to get the paint out of a boat. That was also very interesting. What about you? <laughs> I, um, I tried a new salsa. I'm not even Mexican. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, so what we've learned is consumer behavior has changed during that, that time of crisis. And since we are still in there, we can predict that it will actually be on a different level than what we are used to which also means we should look at the summer 2020 differently than anything we have looked at. That for us means we actually really have to question the strategy we are normally running. So we already established that one thing that especially digital brands or new products do is focus on, on online because that is something they can control. And especially if seasonality is getting down for products, you really tend also to decrease your marketing spend. But what we've also learned is that this may not be the right strategy because we've already been dark for quite a while, which is something that is most probably quite different uh, for most people. So I think we really have to re-question who we are talking to in which situation and take everything into account. For me, that also counts into how do we proceed with our products, right? Definitely. It's time to actually be bold in terms of we're looking at our product and how we're offering it to our consumers. If we don't review this current product situation, then we won't be able to win this kind of situation moving forward. Consumers are of course hurt, they're, they're lost. And with, with adjusting our product offering or our messaging, 
we will be able to touch base again with our consumers. Do you have some examples of that? Definitely. Edeka, for instance, has done really well where they made more of a general health kind of announcement saying, hey, we've done the right measures in our supermarkets, we've made sure that there's distancing, we've made sure that there's no contacts between uh, consumers, and all in all, we're here for you. We're here to support the community. And this came in as warmth and uh, um, security. So all the things that actually Maslow's uh, pyramid has been telling us the whole time. On another aspect, digital brands such as Urban Sports Club adjusted their offering as well. They're usually the subscription-based service, I also use it by the way, um, to try out new sports or be active. Now with the lockdown, we weren't able to visit these locations. True. We were limited and that's why they made their deal with their partners to offer courses online. Smart Video courses, hand-signed courses, anything. Cyberobics is what was one step ahead. Right? They already did their video courses. However, they decided to open up that window of opportunity by saying, hey guys, let's offer this for free for a while. Yeah? Cool. And what about Vuga? I mean, like, they're completely different, right? It's an absolute different uh, uh, edge on how to approach this. Um, Vuga, in this case, they connected more with their players by building alerts and making more in-game messages relevant to the current situation, telling them, stay safe, stay sane, all these kind of things that just are really more touching to the consumer or the players. Which means they actually did something that we would also say you should do. You should meet the consumer where they are. And obviously, the consumers of Vuga are in the online games, right? Definitely. But we think we should think about that even in more detail. Because what we've learned is that people will stay home more, meaning in their respective countries, or in Germany, for example. So the question is, if we now plan a marketing campaign, instead of staying silent and staying in the dark, we should think where can we meet them. So let's look at online, for example. It's quite interesting to see that they were one of the winners as well because the usage increased. But if you do a deep dive, and that makes absolutely sense because we learned people use, uh, really need to consume news, they did. So mostly the news sites actually gained um, awareness. So for example, Zeit or Spiegel had over 70% increase of usage time uh, during COVID. But what we can also see, and that I think is quite interesting, is that it's now already going back to a normalization. Because I mean, like, we are all feeling that the restrictions are loosening, so it is helping us to get a bit more security. And suddenly we already see that, that the online users are actually going down. So our prediction is actually that we will be at a, at a quite stable level during the summer um, this year that will be not too far away from 2019. So we've established now that online may go back to a level that is similar to the summer of 2019. Question is now, what shall we do? So there's something we would like to propose that may be a bit, dif a bit difficult in this situation because we are at online marketing rock stars, but we would like to go back to the roots, meaning looking at above the line marketing, so TV, radio, out of home. Let's do it. TV was obviously one of the winners of the last month, to be honest, because people, as we learned, love to watch the news and um, all the news shows increase. But also, since there was a lockdown, people just watched more TV. They could have done binge watching as well, but TV was definitely one part of the choices. But what we also see is that now it's slowly decreasing because we are out of the lockdown. We are allowed to move more around and so on. So that is normal. And we also have to think about the seasonality, right? Definitely. We've seen in previous years that TV channels, of course, run out of content. Uh, when, let's say between May and June. That's where the final season is ending, waiting for the September to start. And so viewership numbers are, of course, going to drop. There's only going to be reruns during the summer anyways. Yeah. So, but the good thing is, since viewership is dropping a bit during the summertime, also the prices are. And that's something we should establish on. And also we believe because the situation is still different and because there will be so much more people um, around in, in Germany and also the other countries, it actually still makes sense to take TV into consideration for your media mix. Because I mean, like it still has the highest reach of all media, right? Definitely. So take advantage of this when you can. 
But there's also another point, and that is out of hope. And again, if we look back about the predicted consumer behavior, we should be aware that people will stay home more in their area, which means there will be a higher possibility that you will reach your customers via out of home because they're at home, because they will think about possibilities to do staycation, meaning they will go out, they will go to zoos maybe, or other tourist attractions. They will take their car and drive to their family and friends, as we just have established. So out of home, in our opinion, will actually be one of the silent winners of the summer. So why not take those into consideration as well? Hmm. And then I think there's something that I feel every digital brand feels like it's super old school, and that's radio. But I think the one thing that is super good about radio is they actually do not have a seasonality like that. They stay quite stable over the months. They also stayed stable via COVID, but we also think it will stay this the next weeks and months. And if you now imagine again what the consumers, consumers will do, they will be on the road to the family listening to radio. They will be maybe lying at the beach or at the, at the lake and listening to radio because, again, they want to be informed and radio has news almost every half hour. So definitely radio is something that will take advantage of the whole situation too. Whoa, that's actually pretty interesting. But if you would be a digital person running performance marketing, you would like to take control of what campaigns you're running, making sure the costs are all right. So you mean to say, we've actually figured out how we can track this performance wise that's a good part because i totally agree me being a marketer myself and always having a focus on digital products i know that i mean on the one hand for we had seasonality ourselves so we looked into this and on the other hand we always try to measure every kind of impact we had with our marketing budgets and i mean we know that atl was not the cheapest budget you can actually spend obviously but nevertheless, it is something that is reasonable at the moment, in our opinion. But how do we measure that? And we know it is important to measure it, especially now where you feel like you need to be in control. You may have had a loss of revenue in the last month as well, so you have to make sure that with every dollar you spend, you actually get an impact. And that's something that I really enjoyed when I joined DCMN, because I am a data person, I loved that part about my job before in marketing, so I also always try to figure out how a radio campaign, for example, um, really worked. And I had lots of data points to look at and it was quite complicated, mostly managed to do it, but it was a lot of effort on, on the team. So when I actually saw that DCMN had a solution, I was like, yeah, that is cool, so let's talk about it. So there is an algorithm that can help you to measure the offline campaign. What you need for that is actually to know what would have happened if we had not run the campaign. That is called the counterfactual, so the dotted part in that slide. Meaning, I run a campaign in Berlin, for example, and I need to know what had happened if the campaign was not running, so I can determine what the impact of the campaign was. Sounds super logical, but it is not that easy to say because it is a prediction of probability. So what we do is we use data science magic, let's call it like that, um, in which we actually compare regional areas. So that's important to understand. It would be more difficult to have a national campaign because then we would have to data mine to compare it to what, but we can do it on a regional level. Again, this, this example, Berlin, um, so there is a radio campaign running in a certain um, time frame. And we will then look at other cities like Dresden, Hamburg, Frankfurt, for example, and have a look how they perform at the exact same time. And we will also look on how they performed before the campaign was running. And via that, the algorithm can then calculate the counterfactual. So where would we have been in Berlin in comparison to all the other regions? And then we can see what the uplift actually was. So we basically need a control group first before conducting this experiment. Exactly. That is super important that we have that because otherwise, how shall we actually use the algorithm won't work. So what do we do? We need to collect the tracking data. Um, that's something obviously that our data guys can help with um, to make sure that we have all the correct data. We need to determine what kind of KPIs we are looking at. Um, they have to have a certain impact, so they need to be high enough. But it can be website traffic, it could also be app installs, for example. Then we need to know when the flight period is, and it has to be a certain period, approximately around a month. 
And we also need to know where the region is so that we can find the control region that you just said. Um, and when we have that, we can put all the data into DC analytics and calculate the uplift and have a quite confidence in, in how reliable that uplift is. That's so interesting. Do we have a sample of this? Yes, we do. And I just want to make sure again, so we are not talking about measuring offline like online. This is a probability calculation that we have to be aware of. So that's also why we really try to conduct a lot of examples with our clients in the, in the last month, um, so to make sure that this actually works. And this is one of the examples um, where we could actually measure um, a radio campaign and its impact. So we did that radio campaign in Munich, and um, for our client we could see that there was actually a 12% uplift in app installs which was super cool to see and we tried to make sure that this was not only a probability situation but something that was real so we did discuss that in detail with the client they had to look through all their data we looked at brand awareness factors that our inside team can provide and we took everything into account that we could and it showed that actually that uplift was quite reliable and we did that with 12 other clients as well and could see and measure uplifts on radio and out of home campaigns, which we think is super amazing, especially for the upcoming summer. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> that was nice. Okay, so just to sum this up quickly, what, what, what is really important here is taking a holistic approach to the ATL possibilities. Because they may be scary because it's something new, then also, yes, the budget you have to allocate is a bit higher than what you maybe would allocate to small online campaigns. But because of where the people are, because you understand where your target group actually is and their behavior and their need, you can really achieve a possibility to be out there and win this game in this really, really weird time. Definitely. Okay, so Eric, what are our key takeaways now? Well, first and foremost, as we've already discussed during Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, is that we need to approach people as people, not as consumers, but we need to address them in such a human way that we add value to them in the long run. Well, so that means you actually really have to understand your target group. And I believe that most brands already know to whom they are talking. If you don't, go for it. We can help you. <laughs> but just really revisit that because it may be that at the moment with all the insight that also we gathered, the target group may have changed or the, the needs of your target group may have changed. And you should definitely adapt your brand or your product and your positioning to that. Definitely. And also knowing that people are not going on holidays out of, let's say, their countries, they're going to have, of course, a more local kind of approach, staycation. So this is where the reach will actually increase moving forward. Exactly, and if the reach increases, just make sure you actually get part of the pie from that and meet your consumers where they are, so in the surrounding areas, most probably in your own country. Definitely, and since they're in their own countries, ATL will be even more relevant because you want to make sure that you increase your touch points, that your brand is still there, you're still available, and you're still very relevant. So when they make a purchasing decision, it's also going to be meaningful them. So make sure it counts. Because, as we've pointed out before, out of sight, out of mind. And don't forget, now you can even measure part of that. So that is really amazing. And what are your closing words today, Eric? Man, I feel really strong about this. So marketing, as it is, is not a cost. It's an investment. So think more long term. That was so nice. It really touched me. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for taking the time to stay with us today. That was super cool. Um, we hope you enjoyed it and have some key takeaways yourself. But we also want to take the time to thank Bird and Digital who helped us to be here today and to hold this masterclass for you. So thank you very much and stay safe.